Right, again, I would just like to welcome Brenda Fitzgerald and Cheryl Betterton. Betterman. Betterton. Betterton. Cheryl is new to us, and we want to welcome you here today. They're going to be talking about, do you have a frozen shoulder? And it's always nice when Uxbridge Orthopedics comes down the road to visit us, because I always learn something new. And last time when Brenda was here, I learned so much about vertigo. So we look forward to your talk today. Thank you so much for coming. So I just wanted to say a little bit about our place before Cheryl gets talking on the frozen shoulder. We are right down the street. We're connected to Lydia Taft, but both Cheryl and I only treat outpatients, uh, people who come to us for treatment. They don't stay at Lydia Taft. We're just in the same building with them. Uh, we're both physical therapists of several years, I'll say. <laughs> um, although she went to the lesser school, I went to Northeastern. Um, <laughs> she went to BU. Um, <laughs> they're rivals, so. Um, we do, a couple of things I just wanna say, here at the Senior Center, they have your senior van, which gives rides to over to Lydia Taft for a couple of different things. One of those is appointments in physical therapy. So we do often, if somebody needs physical therapy, um, what we do is they'll, they'll call us and say, hey, the doctor wants me to do therapy on my frozen shoulder, for example. And then we call the senior center and we schedule the bus for you and make the appointment. Um, and it's a really nice union that we have. Uh, and we've had several patients uh, do that from the senior center. So it's really nice. And they give you a ride back as well. So you can get uh, easy access to physical therapy through that senior van. Uh, they, the senior van also brings to Lydia Taft, there's a, a free exercise class on Thursdays at 10 o'clock called PACE, uh, that stands for People with Arthritis Can Exercise. Um, that's a program that's a federally funded program that runs out of Lydia Taft's uh, front lobby area where you can go to an exercise class there. Uh, anybody can go, um, you just sign up and the senior bus will take you. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, for those of you in the room, we also offer free injury screens, which we advertise all the time. So if you have a little ache or pain and you're not sure what to do about it, we're happy to um, see you. One of us will evaluate you and just say, oh, this is nothing, don't worry about it, here's a couple of exercises, you're all set. Or, oh, this is bad, I think you need to go see a doctor and get x-rays or any version of that. So just so that you know that that's, those are all things that are offered by, um, by our company for free to any one of you who need it. So next up is Cheryl Betterton, a, a BU grad physical therapist, and she's gonna speak on frozen shoulder. Thank you. Hey guys. So how many of you know someone or have had a frozen shoulder? I heard you, I overheard you say your husband. <laughs> so um, I gave the packets out, so I'm just kind of go, gonna go through that. Um, and if you have any questions, just let me know. So um, the first picture just kind of shows um, the imaging of what a normal shoulder looks like or should look like and kind of um, what a frozen shoulder looks like. Um, it's gets just very inflamed in there and people don't want to move it and that's what where the frozen comes in but actuality if you see a doctor um, the diagnosis the medical the medical terminology for it is um, called adhesive capsulitis so that's that's the real name of it where it, um, that capsule your shoulder is a capsule um, it's a ball and socket joint and it just kind of gets stuck okay um, so frozen shoulder, once again, refers to that sticking, so you, it limits your range of motion and th thus um, limits your function um, and it starts to become painful to do things. Um, you'll start to have difficulties with ADLs, which is activities of daily living, like um, bathing and hygiene and getting dressed and um, reaching into your cupboards and you know just doing your daily tasks around your home. Um, and the other big complaint that um, a lot of patients come to us with um, initially is they're, they, they're really bothered or lack of sleeping because they just, the positioning for that shoulder becomes very, very painful. Um, and that's usually when someone will go see a doctor because they're not sleeping. The shoulder's really, really bothering me. Um, 
And so what are the signs and symptoms of um, that might alert you that you might be developing a frozen shoulder? Limited range of motion, once again, um, of the affected shoulder, uh, pain. Uh, it, you become unable to reach or lift with your affected arm. Uh, it starts to disrupt your daily life. Um, and then pain in the shoulder, once again, with sleeping. Um, sleeping on the, unaffected, on the affected side as well as the unaffected side. Because what happens if you think about sleeping on the unaffected side, the one that hurts you kind of gets um, pulled across and draped and it's not supported. And so that becomes painful. And you try to reposition and then that wakes you up. So you start losing sleep over that. Okay, so the next um, page on there is just kind of shows little happy faces, well, not happy faces. Um, so there's stages of frozen shoulder. There's the inflammatory phase, which is the acute, that's when it's a lot of pain. Um, and uh, so because you're in a lot of pain, you stop using that arm or you limit the use of that arm. And so then the range of motion, the um, mobility, it, you start to freeze. So you 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 only have a certain range of motion in there and then it becomes frozen um, so where you're not able to really use it at all and then it does thaw <laughs> um, it just takes a long time that acute stage can be anywhere from uh, two to nine months um, and then the stiffening phase so the pain might subside but then there's the stiffening phase um, that can be anywhere from four to twelve months um, and then the thawing phase can take up to um, six to nine months. So you're talking, this could be over a two year span of time. So patients think like, oh, you know, they'll come to PT and it'll be all better. They, they, you still go through the, the phases. PT can help promote you getting the arm moving more, um, but you're still unfortunately gonna go through some of these, these phases. Hopefully we can lessen the timing of the phases. Um, so the first phase, once again, is the um, the freezing stage, um, the painful stage. So you start to have pain with with movement. So then you start stop moving because it's painful, um, and then your range of motion starts to become compromised, and um, your pain typically increases at night. Um, so that's when the sleep gets affected. Um, the second stage of frozen shoulder is the frozen stage and your pain may actually start to subside and you think oh maybe I'm doing better but unfortunately your range of motion has already started to be limited and your functions already started to become limited so you're actually restricted and you start using your other side you start compensating so other things can start occurring um, the third stage or the thawing stage is actually when um, the range of motion starts to improve um, so it just takes time, but as I tell all my patients, you have to kind of push through a little bit and try to really stretch and keep that arm moving. Eventually it does get better, but um, there is that phase of kind of working through it. Um, so we'll get to a little bit more of how PT can help in a, in a minute. Um, so once again, the, how long does frozen shoulder last? Completely one to two years. Um, a lot of times people wait um, to see their doctor until like three to four months, so it can prolong it a little bit more because they get to the point where they become more and more restricted and it takes that much longer to restore um, function again. Um, once again, freezing stage, usually the, it's called the acute stage, that's when it's the most painful, is three to six months. Um, then up to a year for the frozen stage, and then the thawing is usually um, one to two years. So unfortunately, um, because what we do best as human beings is we compensate when we're in pain, um, we end up getting secondary symptoms if we don't get this addressed. So what can happen is your neck starts getting pain. Um, it, you know, and it, your neck starts, so you have trouble turning your head. Um, your posture becomes compromised. You start trying to shift away or you slump a little bit to, to get away from the pain. Um, then you have to develop weakness. Um, so you get weakness in your upper back, your shoulder blade area, um, which is our muscles that are used for stabilization when we're sitting, standing, whatnot. Um, and then you can also get a tendonitis 
in the shoulder. So your tendons and ligaments are what kind of hold everything together in the shoulder. Um, so frozen shoulder is the actual joint, the capsule, but then the surrounding supporting structures can get angry because they're being overused or compensated in some way. So you might have an, a problem on top of a problem. Um, so who, who's at risk for frozen shoulder? Um, these are just some guidelines that, you know, you may or may not fall into this, but usually it affects women more than men, um, usually between the ages of 40 and 70. Um, higher incidence in diabetics, um, about 10 to 20 percent higher um, with diabetics. Um, it can also be increased with um, those with thyroid conditions, Parkinson's, and cardiac disease. Um, and then, of course, any, anyone who's maybe had a prolonged immobilization after surgery or fractures, so if you've been in a sling, um, that sort of thing, because your arm hasn't moved and um, it, it becomes painful to move. <clears throat> All right, let's see. So how is frozen shoulder determined? It's usually via assessment. So usually it's you go to the doctor and he's doing his physical exam on you. You're saying, oh, my shoulder's been bothering me. It's been a lot of pain. I have trouble sleeping. You, you know, you kind of give all the signs and symptoms of what's going on in your shoulder. He puts you through the range. He or she puts you through the range of motion, um, and it's it, you don't have to have s severely limited range of motion. You could have almost full range, but it hurts to get to that to certain ranges, um, and so. At that point, usually that's when the diagnosis is made, and ho hopefully, it's sent to PT to kind of get the person moving and grooving a little bit. Um, X-rays are typically normal, so if the doctor's ordering an X-ray, it there's nothing, there's no red flag typically with X-rays, um, but it may show other changes, degenerative changes, osteoporosis, calcium deposits or bone spurs, um, and um, just decreased spacing in the shoulder capsule itself, which is gonna put more wear and tear on the shoulder capsule, which, you know, there's a correlation, um, but that's not a said diagnosis of the frozen shoulder. Um, there's things, like I said, that higher incidence or prevalence um, with the frozen shoulder, but there's no certain thing, no certain test that says you have frozen shoulder. It's usually based on uh, the doctor's assessment. Um, Okay, so how does physical? How can physical therapy help? That's where I. That's where we come in. <laughs> so, if you're coming to us in the painful acute stage, which is when it, pain is your main thing, um, we obviously want to minimize your pain and your inflammation. So, you know, it depending on your other um, medical conditions, you know, we take a history and all that, make sure that what we do with you isn't contraindicated. Um, but in, the, in, in that point, we you know, may use ice, we may use laser, just anything to help bring your inflammation down. Because if you're continuing to be in pain and inflamed, you're not gonna wanna move. So the other thing that we try to do at this point is, is passive range of motion, which is us moving you and stabilizing you where we need to stabilize you so that we're, we're restoring that capsule range of motion. Because as I've said, we're really good at compensation, so we want to make sure that we don't feed into the compensations and, and other movements, okay? Um, and then what we do is obviously patient education, and we home exercise program is really, really key, where you're doing some stretches at home. Usually I tell people to try to um, lift their arm up in the shower, um, where it's the warmth, the heat will help to kind of get the tissue um, stretched out better, and um, just doing um, assisted uh, exercises, which uh, there is a picture in a, um, of some cane exercises. So you take like a wand, um, a broom handle, um, a Swiffer, and um, you can use your good arm to help the other arm get that range of motion going. Um, okay. 
And then as we progress with the physical therapy, hopefully the painful inflammation has subsided. And then we really want to restore full range of motion actively where you can achieve the range of motion. And then it's really, really important for us to work on giving exercises for strengthening. Um, so we're not only strengthening at the shoulder itself, but the shoulder blade muscles, the, all those postural muscles, neck, if that's been become um, involved as well, um, so that whatever movements you're getting are restored. So you can get back to sleeping, you can get back to doing all the things that you want to be doing without pain and without trying to um, overuse another part of your body. Um, so the other treatment options for frozen shoulder are, um, I have on there NSAID. So those are non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. So those are like Advil, um, naproxen, those sort of, um, anti they're anti-inflammatories. Um, some patients, depending on what they're taking for medications, cannot take those. So that's a factor. Um, ice is a wonderful natural anti-inflammatory. So I always tell people, I know, I know a lot of us don't like ice but it is a natural anti-inflammatory. It's not a pill you gotta take, and you put it right on that area, and that helps to diminish the uh, inflammation. Um, sometimes the doctors will order, um, depending on the level of pain and inflammation, they may offer a cortisone injection right in the site, the steroid injection, and that'll go right to the source of the inflammation. Um, and you know, unfortunately, there's no guarantees that that's gonna work, but. Um, if someone's coming to us, we've been trying to work with them with physical therapy, and they're just we're just getting all that guarding going on, and the person's really, really painful and inflamed, sometimes a cortisone injection can really be helpful. Um, to the extremes with frozen shoulder, and unfortunately it, it can happen, um, sometimes the doctors will do what's called the manipulation under anesthesia, where they'll actually put you under, and they crank on you. Um, and then they immediately, typically order physical therapy to get you keep moving after that procedure. And then if you, if it's really, really locked down, um, they will do, um, they will go in surgically and do a release or a clean up in there, which is a debridement. Um, that's not very common, but, um, but those, those, if someone's really, really, really limited and there's, they've tried all other options that that is something to be considered. So that's that's it. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Uh, I knew you would. <laughs> I did suffer from gout, and the uric acid crystals getting between those joints yeah. causes pain. Yeah. What I have found in the past is that I do a lot of uh, desk computer work, and improper support for your arm will cause shoulder pain. Absolutely. It all comes down to posture. It, it really does. And people don't realize that. So if, if we're slumped, if we're forward because we're weak in our shoulder blade muscles, and we go to lift with our arm, it puts a lot of undue strain on that shoulder that our shoulders really aren't designed to take. So it, it you know, whenever I see my patients, they're always like, well, why are we working on those muscles? Because those muscles are designed to hold us and stabilize us and to take the stress off our joints. The question I have is you did not list any causes for the shoulder locking up. I, I'm sorry, what was the cause? What causes them to lock up, like misuse because of improper? Well, no, I, I had said, so it, there's a higher prevalence um, in diabetics um, in women um, between the ages of 40 and 70. They don't really know what causes frozen shoulder, but those, those, age, those age groups, those categories tend to be higher incidence, but definitely immobilization. So um, if you're posturally unstable, uh, let's say, and most of us are. Um, that's why there are some great workplaces out there, and I tell my patients at home, they're, if they're sitting at the computer, make sure they have the right desk height, their monitors are you know, straight, midline, eye level, because um, you don't want to be doing a lot of rotating. Um, Basically, calcium builds up in the joint, or uric acid crystals, for example, again. It, it can be. It definitely, certain medical conditions, thyroid conditions, um, those sort of things can cause... Scar tissue, too. It can yeah. be a lot of things. Yep. So, the name of the game with frozen shoulder is pushing through, 
um, and and trying to restore your range of motion. Um, it's the hardest thing a as a PT when I get that diagnosis, especially someone in that really painful stage, to try to tell them there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it, it's tough, but once you get into that thawing stage, you know, uh, with the, with especially I have a lady right now who's finally over the hump. And we're doing some strengthening, and she's starting to use her arm again and, and get back to get back to normal. So, it's um, it's a part cheerleader during my treatments. It's just encouraging and just you know trying to minimize the pain, but also I know that I need to push the range of motion and I need to push the exercises to get that person back to what they want to be able to do. A lot of education. Has there been any studies about um, conditions that lock your shoulder up being genetically linked? Not that I'm aware of. I think probably the most common would be an overuse like a tendonitis bursitis that hurts. Yeah. It, the inflammation she spoke of, that's what we mean by that. Nice. Um, and then it hurts, so you hold it in, and then it freezes. So you kind of create the scenario for the freezing. And yeah. it gradually builds up until it's just frozen. Correct. Yeah. And it's literally, like, we can't even move it either. It's yeah. just stuck. And a lot of people wait, and they feel like, oh, it'll get better. Like, oh, I'm, so we see them when it's three to four months and they haven't been sleeping for a couple of months and by the way that's so much harder to fix that way yeah. if we get them earlier we can catch it earlier and their loss isn't so great so we don't have a long road to travel uh, you know you're practically at Oz we just need to get you through those it's a tough yeah it's a tough thing to sell to people when they're in that much pain what was your question? Yeah, um, I went to my doctor. I've got something going on in my shoulder. Yeah. And they referred me immediately to uh, a Okay. Um, and I am going somewhere now. Okay. It doesn't seem to be helping at all. There, and like I, I had said at the very end, sometimes. No. No. How long have you been going? Yeah. I've only gone through two years. Two years. So they may, are they only just moving you passively? Okay. I, sometimes, I mean, my lady that I'm thinking of in my head right now, that's all I could start her with. I, I mean, she just would guard with me. But how do you know that you're not doing more harm than you good? I mean, they didn't order an x-ray, but you said... Yeah, they, they don't. No, there's no diagnostics out there. There's no imaging that says you have frozen shoulder. Um, it's, you know... You've only gone a couple of visits, so I would definitely say, I mean, if, if you're in that much pain, then I'm hoping that they're doing things to, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, there, there is the, co yeah, the health care, well, well, that's a whole nother subject after this lovely election, um, but, um, y you know, they, they should definitely be trying to give you some stretches and things, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's really important. Um, and then, are you taking any anti-inflammatories? Okay. So, um, depending on how long. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if I, I usually tell my patients, if you've been coming to PT. Oh, yeah. So, but you just start. But you just started. So, um, you know what I I tell my patients is if this if we're hitting hitting a wall you've been coming you've been do, we've been doing every you know everything in my toolbox that I can do minimize your pain and your inflammation you're trying to do your stretches and exercise to the best of your ability but you are just still really painful I usually tell patients to go back to the doctor I send a report and then see if they'll offer a cortisone injection if cortisone shots that something later on no some doctors will do it right away um, and then have you go to physical therapy, which... They mentioned nothing. That's why I'm going to Oh, okay. I'm going to go to Okay. Yeah. And when I got this shoulder thing on, I thought it was Lyme disease again. Yeah. Another flare-up. Okay. That's the exact way that it happens. Okay. But have you... Goes, yeah. I get the sense of blood flow. Okay. Have you, um, have you seen an orthopedic at all? No. So... I would say ask you. I would still give the PT a little, little more time, um, and then I would say after, yeah, um, and then I would have your. I'm assuming it's your primary care physician that referred you. So maybe to get a referral, to, and I'm sure your your PT would agree as well. Um, a referral to orthopedic. 
um, because the orthopedic, I mean, that's their bre- that's their bread and butter. Like they, they'll know right away, at, and you've already will already have your blood work up and all your X rays and all that. And so, and based on their assessment, they'll be able to to guide you. And most of them do offer cortisone injections. A lot of patients don't want to do that. Um, as a PT, I love when the patients already have the injection and it's helpful because then I can get in there and get the range of motion restored and the I can start doing the strengthening and the exercises a lot sooner. So, you know, I don't want you to be in misery. I would say give it, give it a little more time with the PT, but certainly not too much time because, and I would be honest with your PT about the financial aspect of it. Okay. Because I know I'm sensitive to that and that you know i've 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 called the primary care or you know if the primary care is really not listening um to get the person moved along to who they really need to see and who who's going to help so just you know and i always tell people tell me right off the bat like don't be concerned I, you know i want to be mindful but yeah i would say if you've only gone a couple of treatments give it a, give it a little more time yeah no well yeah and this diagnosis is not an overnight fix by any means this is uh, as you as I showed you guys with the stages it can take a while uh, unfortunately um, it's one of those diagnoses that you know it, it's a tough it can be a tough thing to to um, get a person through um, but it it does get better so if it's truly just frozen shoulder and it's not anything else going on yeah you, it sounds like you're still getting yeah or did I really do something <laughs> And I might be harming it more by going past the Well, I, like I said, the, your PT should be adept at knowing kind of if they think something else is going on and to refer you or whatnot. But um, yeah, you definitely. You mentioned the word rotator cuff, and I get scared to that. But it could be a rotator cuff tendonitis. Yeah. It could be just because you said in the past with the Lyme. That so maybe you overuse something because it hurt before and yeah it could just be a underlying tendonitis, um, but yeah I just yeah great now I'm causing frozen shoulder. <laughs> yeah. I had a, a crazy situation where I had a drug reaction to a beta blocker for my blood pressure mm-hmm. and it caused full body muscle cramps. Yep, so that's great. Yeah. And I tore all the blood vessels and tendons out of my left calf muscle. Oh, wow. Waking up in a sound sleep with it. So my podiatrist uh, prescribed physical therapy because that muscle was tied up in knots and never loosened up on its own. So I went through everything from deep therapy to deep muscle massage to TENS units to you name it, uh, ultrasound. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of times, medication is side effects. Oh, absolutely, and people don't don't realize that. Um, it, it's it's yeah. There's some really nasty side effects, even in herbal remedies. I mean, you got to be careful. Um, everything has a side effect, whether they say it's natural or not. Um, so yeah, that can definitely the beta blockers can definitely cause um, some issues. Yep, yep, absolutely. So um, yeah. Any other questions? Hope you guys learned something today. Our card, so if you have questions, it has our email on it. You can always send them, shoot us an email if you have a question, and flyers and things if you'd like. <laughs> and you hopefully enjoy those blankets. Yes, thank uh, you. They're originally meant, I guess, you know, put in your car for an emergency. But we, as therapists, both noted they're really good low back support. So you can just sneak that right in the low back. Yeah, it's like a little purple. <laughs> So uh, I hope you enjoy them. Nice winter warm gift. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, okay, well, thank you so much. That was very generous and kind. So do keep that in mind that you can email Brenda or Cheryl directly if you have any questions. And if you do need transportation, thank you for mentioning that, Brenda. We uh, often send our van right up to Oxbridge Orthopedics. So. We'll be here very happy to assist you if you need a ride. So thank, thank you again for helping us learn more about how we can thank you. <laughs> thank you. Ease the pain of a frozen shoulder. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you.